Hey everybody, it's Ginger on Wheels here again. Thanks for stopping by the channel where today we are going to be testing and riding, maybe range testing, the Kugu Kirin Kiro 6 Pro. It's a high performance off-road electric scooter, so let's roll the intro and get into it. Alright, so for starters, those of you who are uh, new to the channel won't recognize anything different, but the subscribers will know that I'm not at home. I am in North Carolina right now. I'm not even sure if electric scooters are legal here, but I'm visiting my sister, and I had a few shipped here for testing while I was here, so it is what it is. Right now, we are stuck on a long straight road, which is most of the roads around here, and we're headed to a little off-road park that I saw like a couple days ago, and hopefully we can uh, ride, around, ride the scooter around in the park and it won't break. That's the goal anyway. It's an off-road scooter, like I said, it's got the big fat knobby tires on it. Top speed is around 45 miles an hour. Let's see if I can get there now. The speed limit on this road is 45, by the way. People in North Carolina just generally don't care about scooters at all, so they're gonna pass me on blind corners around double yellows and all that. I'm ready for it. Bring it on. It looks like at full charge with me on it. We're pinning it right now. We got, what do we have? 65 kilometers an hour. It's weird, the uh, display is reading 68 kilometers an hour, but the actual finger throttle display is reading 72 kilometers per hour. So, I don't know who's right, but there's a discrepancy between the big nice display on the front and the actual speedometer. Kind of a bummer. So let me tell you about the Kugu Kirin Q06 Pro while we're cruising here. It weighs 90 pounds, has a max rider weight limit of 330 pounds, top speed of around 40 to 45 miles per hour. It's got dual 2600 watt motors and a 60 volt 27 amp hour battery which gives us around 1600 watt hours. It's got 11 inch uh, pneumatic tires, tubeless, and this scooter right now is equipped with the knobbies. It does feel a little less stable than other scooters. The uh, front end isn't quite very sure of itself at high speed here. And the suspension, I, I know it's rated to 330 pounds, but it feels a little bit stiff. Like there's, there's a lot of give in the suspension, but I guess the, the standing rider weight sag for me is about like 60 or 70%, so there's just not a lot of suspension left for me to bounce off of while I'm riding it and I, I'm wearing glasses right now and it looks really bumpy. <laughs> You know what I mean? I have to bend my knees and stand on my tippy toes to eliminate the uh, amount of bumpiness it has. You can kind of use your knees and ankles as shock absorbers if you need to on scooters like this. Because this is not meant as a high speed uh, road scooter. There you go. North Carolina for you. We're going the speed limit and we just got past. Everyone's got to go 15, 20 over. Or even more if they see you're on a scooter because they got to flex their truck. I really like how wide the handlebars are on this thing. You'll notice they're not traditional uh, scooter size handlebars. They feel pretty wide, more like the Wolf King GT. The bars are pretty low though. The overall deck to bar height is definitely not as tall as the GT. It's more like the original Wolf Warrior 11 Plus, closer to that maybe. And then of course the um, stem has a riser bar on it too. And if I'm not mistaken, there's gonna be people fishing down here. I heard it was a fishing hole, so I'll try and not be too loud. I do know people wrap ATVs around in here though. Let's see, before I get started on this uh, off-roadiness, why don't we go in the sun here and I'll give you a walk around of the scooter just in case I total it. You'll know what it looks like before it was wrecked. All right, so here it is in all its brand new glory. We've got an on-off switch for the lights, turn signals here. There's a button for a horn, which I'm not gonna press, but it is fairly loud. Big display here. You can see it's, it looks like it's made by iBike, so it's an e-bike display. Hopefully you can see it in the sun. It's got a speedometer here, speed modes one, two, and three, and then the battery gauge and a tripometer there, so you can tell how many miles you went. It says it took us five miles to get here, but I know that it's only 3.9, so speedometer's off just a little bit. It's got a key ignition. We see this standard key ignition on a lot of scooters. Standard finger throttle, but it doesn't have any um, adjustability modes. There's no P settings as far as I know, and the scooter didn't come with a manual, so I can't tell you if there are any advanced settings Settings, but it does have speed modes one, two, and three. You can flip through by pushing that button, and that's the on and off button. I do like the grips. They're nice wide grips with a palm flare out there. And we've got our eco turbo button in single dual. This will make the scooter go slightly faster, and then this will turn on and off the front motor. Full front and back hydraulic brake. They're made by DY Island. They're the same brakes that are on the Fidico Lightspeed Knight. The stem, it does have an adjustable height stem, which is pretty rare for scooters of this power level. Um, normally they would crack. So I don't know how well this is gonna hold up over time, but only time will tell, I guess. This down here, this seems like an afterthought to me. 
Like they um, made such a high speed scooter with a stem that looked like this originally and then it was probably cracking or breaking. So they added these little reinforcement bars and it looks okay, it doesn't look terrible, but I'm not sure how sturdy it is. Pretty cool, it's got these nice bug eye headlights that look like they'd be pretty bright, but they're not that bright. They just look cool more than anything else. I do like the kickstand, it's got a nice sturdy kickstand right here. Grip tape all along the whole deck. It's got a 60 volt, 27 amp hour battery in here and I won't peel this off because I have no place to put it, but there are LEDs that run through here when you turn the lights on that look pretty sweet. It also has the brake light assembly back here with turn signals on the left and right. Probably won't be able to see them in the sun, so I won't bother. Suspension right here in the back, it does have dual spring suspension. If you're riding around in the mud and off-road, a lot of scooters, they just have one spring back here and it gets sprayed with all the mud and debris. When you have the springs out on the side like this, it kind of keeps them more protected from getting sprayed by junk. Um, it has a lifting handle back here. This handle you can kind of lift the scooter with, it pivots. And sometimes I find that it's like this and then I go to step on the rear foot plate and it kind of throws me off and it falls down a little bit. So it doesn't need to move, but it's cool that it does. It's a nice little handle. The front suspension is sort of the same deal as the rear. It's got dual springs off to the side and they're a little bit smaller in diameter than other springs I've seen on scooters. The suspension does work, but it's not amazing, you know? It's just sort of there. It doesn't seem as great as the suspension on the V-Set for off-roading, but hopefully it'll work we'll we'll see we're on the trails right now we have dual charge ports here so you can charge the scooter i believe up to eight amps total comes with two 2.8 amp chargers it says it has dual 2600 watt motors but the motors on the side read 2800 watts caster wheels on the bottom so when you fold the scooter down with this super sketchy folding latch that it has <laughs> i should go over that too um you can lift the scooter by the little handle and then it'll roll along the caster wheels on the bottom so you don't have to actually lift the whole thing up if you want to move it around folded but let's cover this folding latch real quick this handle comes out and then the scooter folds and so i mean that that is what's keeping the scooter locked in position it says clamp the safety device upward and tightly <laughs> otherwise it's dangerous yeah that's as, as tight as it goes so if something snags that when you're riding i don't know the only thing holding you in is this little pin after that it's not as good as some folding mechanisms I've seen, but it didn't fold up down on that high speed ride. So I'm not sure I'd say I like it, but it does work. It's got a, a metal fender here in the back too. And these look like dual piston hydraulic brakes. Pretty sweet, but I'm getting sweaty talking about it standing around. So let's ride the thing, shall we? All right, so to turn it on, we just turn our key and hold the power button and our display lights up and we're ready to go. It says we have 60 volts left. So did we use half battery just to get here for five miles? Oh, I need some new gloves. These things have seen some all right, I'm gonna go in single motor mode at first if I can. No, I can't. It just doesn't want to go in single. This isn't the right way at all. Oh, look, a cool tree fort. Check out this tree fort. Don't you guys wish you had one of those as a kid? This is like some Huckleberry Finn stuff back here. Awesome. And there's even a little fishing hole right there. Okay, back on the real path, I think. Ooh, pretty clunky off-road. That front suspension, they shouldn't have cheaped out on that front suspension. It's really bumpy and hard to manage. Scooter's heavy too, it's 90 pounds, so it's not exactly easy to swing around. Man, I hope you can hear that rear suspension just clanking and janking. I thought this thing would excel off-road, but it's not, not doing that great. Whew. Man, that is hard work. This is not a very nice off-roading scooter. Not very nice at all. Let me set the camera down and I'll give you an idea of what the suspension looks like when I bounce on it. In case you think I'm lying, in case you think I'm fibbing. The travel is there, it's just so easy to get to the bottom. It's got more spring in its step than the Wolf does, but the Wolf is not that hard to off-road. I'm just kind of racking my brain here, thinking for reasons why this is so hard to off-road. It's got the suspension, seems decent on paper, but wow, it's hard to manage. Okay, let's keep going, see what happens. I wish I had a fishing pole. Check out how nice this little fishing spot is. <laughs> What if I come across like a moonshine distillery back here? Jumanji vines hanging down? Oh, well we're not gonna be able to get across that, are we? Huh. Really hard technical off-road trails combined with a scooter that doesn't do that well off-road. I wouldn't say this is very enjoyable. Ow. <laughs> Hit my helmet on the log. Well, there really isn't a whole lot to explore back here, is there? I feel I've been duped. Maybe I'll try this way. If we can get it through this goop, I think that there might be some funness on the other side. Oh man, it's so bumpy. It's 
So I've been warned back here, there are snakes, copperhead snakes I'm supposed to keep my eyes peeled for. Not that I'd be able to see a camouflage one if it were in the trail, but good piece of advice, right? I think I've, I figured out why this scooter isn't great for off-roading for me. You probably noticed when I was jumping on it that this rear suspension piece is a lot like the Dualtron Storm. It moves independently of the scooter. So when I bounce on the scooter suspension, this front wheel goes up and down and the foot plate isn't locked level with the deck. So when I off-road, I instinctively put one foot back here to brace myself and that, that one foot is just constantly getting bounced around because when the suspension compresses, this whole thing moves. And that is why it doesn't do great off-road. The Dualtron Storm is street, a street scooter and so they can get away with it on that one. This one, I feel like they kind of missed the mark a little bit. Built like an off-road scooter, but then they gave it that street rear suspension, which is just really hard to manage off-road. Well, we've been around the whole fishing hole. We're back at the tree fort now, coming from the opposite way. I guess that's all there is to explore back here. I'm just gonna go back out on the road and send it. Hopefully we've got enough road left. It does decent on mild off-roading like this, but anything with big bumps or obstacles or tight turns, or that's successively really bumpy and little small bumps, very hard. This stuff is fine though. Just got our squeaky front suspension. Ooh. Get some hard hits with some average size roots. <sighs> Sweating my nuts off. It's only 75 degrees. Hard work hauling the scooter around as it would turn out. So this battery gauge on the display still says we have full bars, but I can see we have 62 volts, which is somewhere around 60% battery. Not an accurate battery gauge on the front there. Big display doesn't seem very accurate at all with uh, speed or battery, so I'm not really sure why it's there. Not user programmable, so it is what it is. Oh, I discovered a new trail. Where does this one go? Oh man, I just feel like I'm gonna break this thing. Does that not sound like it's gonna break to you? Sounds like it's gonna break to me. Yeah, it just does not feel safe. I think the suspension, the springy suspension and all that is just made so that it, they can claim that 330 pound max rider weight limit. But let me tell you, if you were 330 pounds on this thing doing what I just did off road, I think you'd be filing a warranty claim. <laughs> Definitely got a squeaky suspension somewhere. I believe one of our headlights is coming loose. Let's check it out. Huh, not the headlights, that's good, not the brakes. I think it's a suspension coil. I don't know, something doesn't sound right with it anymore. Maybe it's the leaf. I guess we'll find out. Well, we learned some lessons today. What did we learn? Just because the scooter looks like it's made for off-roading and is advertised towards off-roading and has knobby tires does not mean it's any good at off-roading. It's got the torque, it's got the traction. It's just the handling is, is piss poor on this thing. <sighs> Too bad. It's that rear suspension that does it for me. If you're the kind of person who can off-road with your feet flat on the uh, grip tape section of the deck and you're okay with them just bouncing up and down all the time off the deck, you know, go for it. Full send this thing off-road. But if you're the kind of person like me or like most people who need that rear or foot plate to brace your foot against, then uh, your, your rear foot's still gonna be bouncing all over the place while you try and stabilize yourself with the front foot, which is also gonna be kind of bouncing. It's just a very, very bouncy scooter on the deck. If you're gonna do the uh, independent suspension on the front, on the rear swing arm, then you really, really need to upgrade the suspension to something decent. And we're back on this 45 mile an hour road. <laughs> Big old Durker truck tailgating the crap out of some poor small eco car. All right, send it. 30 kph, 40 kph, 50 kph. Can't turn the speedometer into miles per hour. Don't know if I mentioned that, but there's no obvious way to do it. And like I said, it didn't come with a manual. So 65 kilometers an hour, or maybe it's 62. Is it 62? Cause that's what the big fatty display says. Finger throttle says 68, big display says 65. Either way, that's pretty fast. My glasses are just shaking up and down like crazy on my face. I can barely even focus. And I'm standing on my tippy toes. The suspension just isn't great at high speed or off road. Woo. Smelly and windy. I can hear something squeaking like crazy. One of the suspension pieces, I presume. I wish the voltage readout was brighter. I can't see it at all right now. I have no idea how much battery I have left. Acceleration has really dropped off a cliff. I used to be able to burn out from a stop easily, and now it's a slow roll up to 30, 30 kph that is. It does have a good amount of power, and I do like, obviously, the fact that it has the 11 inch tires. Gotta love the 11 inch scooters. It's got nice wide bars. It does have the little pickup handle in the rear, which is kind of nice. You can pick the scooter up instead of having to break your back, picking it up by the rear frame or something. It's got cool LED disco lights if you're into that. I know I am, but not everybody is. Some people think they just look dumb. And in that case, I should mention that there's no way to turn 
turn the disco lights on the deck off and have the headlights on. They're all on or all off. It's got dual 2400 watt motors and I imagine it's probably capable of going faster than this, but it feels electronically limited to around this 60 to 65 kph. Wow. <laughs> around the 60 to 65 kph uh, level. And I think that's so you can maintain high speeds like this without blowing the controllers. Because I can just pin this thing for five miles at a time and it's not overheating, which is nice. More than you can say about some of the Cabos. And the earlier Dualtrons would overheat too if you pinned them for too long. I am in dual motor mode though, so I imagine if you pin this in single motor mode, just floored it for five or six miles, you'd probably overheat the rear controller, but that's why we have dual motor mode. And I've recently proven that dual and single really aren't that much different from each other as far as efficiency goes, so I recommend always keeping it in dual motor mode, and I imagine that's why Dualtrons, there is no single motor mode, it's always dual. We're back home now, back to my home away from home anyways. All right, you guys, well, that's gonna sum up my quick little ride review on the Kugel Kirin Q06 Pro. It's a great scooter for the price, and I say that with an asterisk, for the price, because for the price, you're not gonna find a faster, more capable scooter. But as far as off-road, high-performance scooter goes, I would put this towards the lower rungs. I really don't like that the rear suspension moves independently of the deck, and the adjustable stem kind of freaks me out. There's also some creaking and squeaking going on. I don't know where from, but I'm assuming the suspension, which is under, the scooter is under-equipped as far as suspension goes. It's really bouncy at high speed and it doesn't perform that great off-road, but at mid-range, it's nice. It's nice to have when you go over potholes or bumps. It does have the nice big display that we saw, obviously, but the display is really discrepant from the actual speedometer, so I don't know who to believe. You're gonna have to get your phone out and GPS check it. Uh, as far as I know, there's no way to put it into miles per hour, so you're stuck with KPH, and the, all of the displays are really hard to see in the sunlight. Like, I don't know if you can even see anything on this screen. I can barely see anything. Can't read the voltage readout at all unless I cup it. And this is pretty visible. That's no, there's no complaints there. I mean, it could be brighter, but I can still see it. It has pretty uh, cheap quality cells inside the battery, so there's a lot of voltage sag and it runs out of torque pretty quickly. The front headlights do look cool, but they're not that bright. It does go 45 miles per hour though. It does have good grip off-road because you've got the off-road tires. It's got decent stability because the bars are so wide. I really like that. It's got the 60 volt, 27 amp hour battery, so you're probably looking at between 20 and 35 miles of real world range. I'm about 220 pounds, so take that with a grain of salt. It looks semi-decently waterproofed. I never mentioned it when I was riding around, but this stuff right here and all the little, like this has electrical tape on the ceiling, on the entrance holes here and under here, it's IP54 water resistance rated. And I can say it doesn't look like there are many water ingress holes. Like this looks like it has a special rubber sort of coating on the outside of it. I don't see any ingress points on this display, maybe on the back on the crease here, but it's gonna be really hard to water log this scooter. So light rides in the rain are okay. And it's got the off-road tires for extra grip in the rain. So I'd say you're okay to ride this when it's wet out, which is a nice feature not a lot of scooters have. It's got great brakes, the DY Island brakes, 180 mil. Um, I think they're dual piston brakes, but they're not quad like Maguro's or anything, but they just grip really well. They're the same brakes that are on the uh, Fidico Lightspeed Knight, and that scooter weighs like 200 pounds, and this thing weighs 90 pounds, so great stopping power. I imagine the scooter would have a lot better ride if you could find some other springs to upgrade from this. You can just measure the eye to eye hole and maybe put some other springs in there. It's a stretch though, but you might just be stuck with what you get. I do like how modular this headlight display is. You could remove these headlights under here if you wanted to and wire in your own 12 volt option. They make some nice fat LED light bars that you could put on there. Overall, decent scooter. I give it like a six and a half out of 10. And for the price, probably closer to an eight out of 10 because I think it's gonna be really hard to beat this thing for the price. Now that we're stopped, you can see the little LED lights I was talking about. You can see the flashing in the deck, hopefully. And then this is just LED lit up, says Kugu Kirin on it. It does come with two chargers. Not a lot of scooters come with two chargers, so keep that in mind. It's an extra 50 bucks you save. If there is a coupon code they give me so that you can buy this thing for cheaper, I'll put it on the video now or down in the video description. But definitely check out the link in the description. You can look at the specs on the scooter for yourself and decide if it might be right for you. So thanks for watching the video. Stay tuned for more and I'll see you next time.